This is gonna be all about piston rings and all of its functions. We got the top ring here, the second ring, and of course the oil control rings. It has its own job, each of them individually, but each can help the other improve its function, therefore making more power, the engine becomes more efficient, and you don't consume oil. Hey, you get the cake and eat it too, right? But that's also one of the things that could actually be detrimental to the performance of an engine. You can copy the setup of the engine completely, but if it's set like this with the piston rings not good, it's not going to make that much power. And here's the custom pistons we're going to talk about a bit more. Yep, you know this one is for you! <laughs> So that's my brand new custom set pistons. I just took out one out from the box. I just kept it safe. But let's focus on this. The GDM ITR piston sets that I have on the shelf. It's all stock bore and all decent, decent condition. So yep, let's arrange this like this. So here, you can see the top ring, of course, is on the top. It fits snug there. It holds compression. The second ring and, of course, the oil control ring. Here's the interesting part. You notice... On each side, there's three holes. On the other side here, there's also three holes. Because the job of the oil control ring is actually like, as it says, it controls rings, oil. So as the piston goes down, the oil from the rod side throw or clearance, and even the oil jet, it sprays oil underneath the pistons and comes out here. And the oil control ring spreads it out evenly to lubricate the whole thing on the bore so it doesn't scrape anything. But the second ring, its job is actually to scrape oil down. This way, the top ring does not get the oil, it won't smoke. So the oil control ring, as the piston goes up, because it has, you know, the rings and the ridges there, it retains oil. So as the piston goes up, it still has oil lubricating the piston skirts. And that's how it operates really good, safely, and properly. So the importance of the oil control ring is really mainly to avoid having your engine smoke, you know? It may have good compression because the top ring is okay, but if the oil control ring is not scraping it down, the, the oil is gonna scrape, it's gonna smoke. Here's a diagram, as you can see, as the piston goes down, piston ring number two, or the scraper ring, scrapes the oil away from the top ring. But the oil control ring here spreads out oil evenly around the skirt, so it's lubricating it, even though the piston goes up, I, I mean down, sorry. And as the piston goes up, the, it's called oil return hole, the one we showed earlier, because, you know, the oil can come back inside there. And the, the remaining oil on the spring of, of itself, of the oil control ring, spreads out to the skirts. So it's still lubricated well. And of course, the top ring here will just hold the compression, make good power, so it won't smoke. So if you think about it, the second ring is really important. If it doesn't scrape oil enough, it's going to keep smoking the engine. To further expand, there's about 40% frictional losses on an internal combustion engine. And half of it is about from the piston rings. So when you think about it, that's about 15% wheel horsepower lost just because of the friction. And there's nothing we can do about it. That's just how the engine performs or functions. But if you don't make it good enough for the piston rings, like it's going to be worse than it should, then you're going to lose more power than that. And yes, that's worth talking about. A little later, we have a few examples of that because some people, especially locally, they like to run their rings a little, a little tighter than they should. I don't know why. It's obviously not for performance, but they go for performance. Before we go further, I need a favor. Hit the like button. As the more like the video get, the more activity it shows to the algorithm and it spread out to a wider audience. That helps the channel grow even faster and grow even better. Of course, that makes you go faster. Yes, and if you haven't, you gotta subscribe. This way, you can binge watch on all the other videos whenever you have your free time or at night after you subscribe. So, yep, that helps, right? And here, for the hardcore, because you're hardcore yourself, for the enthusiast, we have over 18 videos of ultra technical videos like on dyno tuning not just the dyno but ecu tuning engine building and all the tricks that we do even on the manifold so yep that something is gonna be really worth it for you to join the members only section yeah but here to further expand that let's rearrange the pistons here 
all right let's move this let's make it it seem like we're facing the engine or this engine is facing us so it's one two three four this way all right so now imagine this if the piston number one fires you know the combustion or the power stroke right the piston pushes down this two three and four are freeloaders so the friction that it has is just parasite loss to the piston number one is making power but it's being consumed by those three also and then when piston number three fires the same thing all three of these are freeloaders so they're you know eating up horsepower so when you think about when you don't get your piston rings correct like the gaps and all that it's not gonna seal as well but at the same time it's also frictional loss that's not helping generate power so or it's eating up horsepower so that is why in every engine build that we do, we, of course, we check the bore if it's straight like this. And of course, if you don't have a bore gauge, you can send them block to the machine shop, have them hone it. Because of course, if it's not straight, they're going to tell you it needs to go oversized pistons or, you know, a new sleeve. You, but you cannot assume that you just need to do that or the builder that you go to would assume that, oh, it needs to go oversized they didn't check it you know and plus if they're just spending your money so they're deciding for you that's not good right so to further expand that there's a i know someone built a b16a with ctr cams ctr pistons and type r manifold and they made 160 wheel horsepower just 160 wheel horsepower and when you think about it this one if you remember this we did the B16A with just ITR cams, only ITR cams, but ITR manifold too that we ported, and it made 186 wheel horsepower. If you remember that video on the dyno, right? So when you think about it, 160 wheel horsepower is what they got, and as mentioned earlier, 15% losses. So 160 and 15% of 160 is 24. So add that 160 and 24, 184 wheel horsepower. So when you think about it, they had a slightly better cam than us, but we actually made about more than 15% more power. Maybe that's just engine building, right? It's piston rings. And another thing that's been done, like, you know, for race applications, it's been done a long time ago here. They have, they drill holes here, like a vertical port. We call, they call it gas ports or, a, you know, a horizontal one. But it's, the goal is to push compression gases inward behind the piston ring, behind the top ring, and it pushes it out and gives a impressive or massive seal. So it's going to make good power. The reason for that is this lets you run a low tension ring this way there's less drag you obviously make more power here so you can see the gas go there and pushes the top ring out right but of course if the better video here the vertical gas ports if you drill a hole here so it goes directly behind the top ring and pushes it out on combustion it's gonna get you know more power or good power with running a low tension ring and here's our modded race pistons that we did is this is 81 bore so this is for pure 16 as you can see there's only top ring but that's it there's just an oil ring this has no gas ports but this is meant for a dry sump engine or an engine with excellent crankcase evacuation this way it won't smoke but it'll have minimal losses because it's just the top ring and the oil ring so as bc says this is probably like 15 or even uh 15 less than that like 10 or even 8 percent losses than the usual pistons so this is for race application or for hey for engine builder showdown we have this but there's no competition like that here so this is set aside for future use for me all right and let me show you under it the piston we ordered this we had this designed before cp pistons bought out arias so this is still arias back then see arias pistons but of course arias now is owned by cp pistons is still an awesome brand it's still really really good now okay going back to this if anyone remembers this one this is a b20 vtech that we did for jasper or 
ECU later as everyone knows him. We've, we did this around 2016 and then upgraded the piston to 2018 and it's been street and driven to the track. All good, no trailer. It's a 12 second, it's actually 12.5 second street car. Jasper told me people would ask him what's the setup of his engine and if you watch this video which is going to be in the description below and we'll put it in the comment too we described we talked about the whole setup and it's all there the reason why i mentioned this is because i know last year someone did the exact same setup but only made 214 wheel horsepower and just ran 13.4 that's like almost a second slower for the exact same setup and they actually even did better because they used an ultra street intake manifold so that's better than jasper's but they actually ran almost one second slower just the same setup so when you think about it this is why understanding piston rings like this and its function and the ways you can work around it and improve improve it or make it better is really really important just like on this video here we did for for bearing clearances is much the same it creates power or it decides to lose power for your build so you either make or break it by building properly or improperly this is why we openly share the setups that we do or we build that's fine with me you know everyone can have know the setup but if you're not as meticulous as i am then definitely the engine you would build is going to be slower or more inferior than the engines that i build so it's simple as that unlike unlike locally they're so secretive and all this stuff it doesn't make sense it's like don't you have anything else to improve upon like you hogging out secrets so it doesn't make sense right so hopefully this gives you a bit more info on piston rings and understanding it and when you're building it you gotta do it better or you get a chance to do it even better so now we're thinking about making another one about blocks and making power but we don't know yet so hey you can click here for the playlist